Hey guys, what's going on and welcome to today's video for Legends of Runeterra. Today, we're going to be looking at five new-ish decks that have come out with the Sharima expansion. Uh, lots of good stuff here. Some of these decks are completely new. Some of these decks are old decks with a new take on them. So, uh, I tried to get a little bit of everything here for everyone. Um, so there is probably a deck here that you will like. Uh, all of these decks, I also tried to pick a deck for all five of these decks, uh, decks that I think are good enough to reach masters. Only time will tell just how good they are. But I think all of these are solid decks to play for the latter at the moment, if you're looking for a deck to play. Anyway, though, enough rambling. Let's look at the first deck. For first up, English is hard. We got Lee Sin. Yes, I know, I know, I know. Everyone's like, ew, Lee Sin, Lee Sin. I hate Lee Sin. And then we have the other group of people who's like, all right, Lee Sin. I love Lee Sin decks. This is for you guys. So with Sharima, Lee Sin has a new friend. I don't want to say the old friend of Targan is gone, but Lee Sin now doesn't have to be paired with Targan anymore. Sure, you could say in the previous days, you could pair Lee Sin Karma with... Shadow Isles, but that was more of a spooky karma deck with Lee Sin doing a Thresh impersonation than an actual Lee Sin deck. This deck is a pure Lee Sin deck. No secondary champion. You could, if you want, run uh, Karma as a secondary champion and use Karma as a, a little bit of extra late game. The problem with that is you don't really need the extra late game because you're going to be winning the game around turn seven, turn eight or so. And that's if you're not even, and that's, um, I'd say on average, you could win the game as early as turn five with this deck because of how mechanics work and how the deck is. Uh, so the way the deck works is if you don't know it, you play Lee Sin, you level up Lee Sin, you give him overwhelm. You buff him up a lot, and then because of the way Overwhelm on Liu Sin works, along with his Dragon Rage, Dragon Kick, whatever it's called, you dome him for 20 damage, or however much damage you need. Now, easier said than done, I know. But thanks to uh, a lot of new mechanics from Sharima, this seems uh, pretty good. Sure, it's still a work in progress, but let's go and talk about certain card choices, and why they are good. First off, uh, I don't think I have to talk too much about why Lee Sin's in the deck, obviously. Let's start off with the followers. We got Chronomancer up first. Chronomancer is just great. Predict and the predict mechanic, or sorry, the predict mechanic itself just lets you find what you need, and you can skip the predict mechanic. If you see three cards and you don't want any of those cards, you can actually skip putting a card on top of your deck by pressing the button to pass priority. It will say skip or something. I can't remember the exact wording. So great card. So Chronomancer lets you find Lee Sin uh, consistently. It lets you find a counterspell if you're missing counterspell. It lets you find some buffs if you need buffs. All around great card, great mechanic. It's also why we run Ancient Preparations. That and the 2-2 from Ancient Preparations helps out a little bit too. Next up, uh, we got Xenotype Researchers. Xenotype Researchers is great in this deck. There aren't that many units in the deck, so it's very likely it's going to hit either Lee Sin or Kinku Lifeblade. We'll talk more about Kinku Lifeblade later. Uh, sure, if it hits Aspiring Chronomancer, it feels a little bad. Same as if it hits another Xenotype Researchers, but whatever. It's just the upside of hitting Lee Sin and Lifeblade are just so good. By hitting Lee Sin, you don't need to spend as many cards to buff him up. And, well, Lifeblade will become a 5-5 five, five lifesteal with Elusive. And to go on from that, let's talk about Lifeblade. Uh, you might say, why no Eye of the Dragon? Well, this deck doesn't really play like Eye of the Dragon decks in that it's not really playing two spells every turn. The way this deck plays is it'll just play a bunch of spells on one turn to level up Lee Sin and try to kill them. You might say, how do you have enough mana for that? Uh, I'll tell you later with how uh, Payday and Lucky Finds work. That's how. In other words, if you know it, you know it. Uh, but because of that, we can't really run Eye of the Dragon because getting our Dragonlings off every turn or almost every turn is just not consistent enough. 
So we need another way of lifesteal, another anti-aggro card, in other words. The two choices that I think are viable are, as you can see here, Kangu Lifeblade, and the other one, which is Tasty Fae Folk. The problem, in my opinion, is Tasty Fae Folk, sure, it trades up a lot of the time, thanks to its 4-2 stat line, but also because of its 2 health, it also dies to a lot of the same removal that Kingku Lifeblade does. Sure, I guess it dodges Culling Strike, but meh. And Kinku Lifeblade's elusive, so it can attack in when a um a tasty Fae folk can. So that's nice. Plus, uh, it's a really good hit for Xenotype Researchers, becoming a 5-5 lifesteal elusive. Plus, even if it doesn't get a buff, if it just gets that one chip damage hit on your opponent's Nexus and brings them from 20 to 18 health, that could be the entire difference. That means your Lee Sin doesn't have to get as big of a buff to kill them in one turn. So, pretty good. Uh, as for the landmarks, we talked about Ancient Preparation and how Predict's great. Preservarium is just here for more card draw and cycling and draw and whatever you want to call it. Inner Sanctum is one of the ways you are able to kill your opponent and level up Lee Sin, power level him in one turn. You play the Inner Sanctum the turn before you play Lee Sin. You get two Lucky Finds. One Lucky Find actually counts as two spells. I'm not sure if this is a bug, so if this is a bug, um... Sorry, and they fix it later, but I'm, I don't, it's not a bug, or sorry. How to say this? It may be a bug, but I haven't seen anything about it from Riot, so for now I'm going to treat it like it's not a bug. But if you play a Lucky Fine, that counts as one spell. And then the buff itself that you choose from the Lucky Fine is a second spell. Now, is that a bug or not? I don't know. But because of that, the Inner Sanctum is technically giving you two Lucky Finds, so since both Lucky Finds counts as two spells for Lee Sin, that's already four spells cast for Lee Sin. That's halfway to a Lee Sin level up. And then you have things like Payday to help you level up, and Rite of Calling is a zero mana card to help you find Lee Sin. You got Shape Stone as well to buff him up even more. Just Shape Stone giving plus three plus one, if you play a landmark, of course, is one of the ways you can actually buff Lee Sin extremely quickly for extremely small amounts of mana and kill your opponent in one turn on turn five. So, uh, really fun deck. As for the rest of the cards, I don't think I need to tell you, talk too much about them. Hourglass, Nopify, Rite of Negation, yeah, that's your protection suite for protecting Lee Sin, Concussive Palms, uh, try to slow down your opponents, Rite of Calling, just an extra way to find Lee Sin, plus it's a spell so it helps him. Shape Stone, uh, I already said it a little bit, but it helps you buff him so he can kill your opponent in one turn. Payday helps level him up. Deep Meditation is just some extra card draw to find more spells for Lee Sin. So yeah, uh, really fun deck. Pretty difficult to play, though, in my opinion. About as difficult as any other Lee Sin, so, or Lee Sin deck. So if you like Lee Sin decks, this is a really great deck to try out. But it's, at the moment, I think it's more of a a meme, more of a trolley kind of deck, but I think it could be a solid choice of a deck that I could see being brought to tournaments if, say, you're playing, I don't know, Zoe in another deck and you want to bring a Lee Sin deck, but you can't bring Lee Zoe, so you would bring this deck instead. Anyway, though, I've talked way too much about this deck. Let's go to the next one. Uh, we have coming up Talia. Talia Aphelios Veiled Temple. Now, Talia is... I don't know how to say it properly, but controversial. A lot of people think she's really strong. A lot of people think she's the weakest champion. I think she's in a little bit of a middle ground. I think she's strong, but not extremely strong. I definitely don't think she's weak, though. So you might say, okay, streamer, how does this deck work? Well, we already know Aphelios is good, even after his nerf to a 3-2. We already know Temple is good. So what if you go and play Temple... And then you play Talia, and you get another temple. Wow, that's insane. Also, Talia makes exact copies, so when you play Talia, she will copy the temple. Since you play Talia, that temple that is on the field already will be halfway, one out of two, of giving you its activation cost, as will the copy temple. So then you just have to play, like, a cheap spell or whatever, and your temples will activate, buffing Talia or Aphelios or whoever is on the field who gets the buff. So... There's not much to talk about this deck, um, since Temple is not really a new deck. It's, uh, I don't know. 
it's sort of like a tempo e deck that can play the control a lot of time. You will just kind of control the board using things like Aphelios and his moon weapons. Um, I can't remember the name of the card. The two mana card, it's like Sky something, two mana, three, one, that when you behold a Nightfall card, it gives you two spell mana, a refill of two spell mana. We don't play that card in this deck. Instead, we play Rock Hopper. Some versions of this deck play that card. I personally like Rock Hopper better because it helps you level up Talia quickly. And in my opinion, Talia is a bad champion if she doesn't level up. If she levels up, then I think she's strong. So, yeah, as for the other cards, uh, Preservarium, again, good card draw, and it helps you uh, level up Talia, and she kind of needs to level up. Um, as for the suite of spells, Exhaust is kind of here as a way to deal with champions. As the deck kind of struggles to deal with champions, like most of Felios decks do. And then for the unit suite, your standard Targon units. Um, I don't really think there's much to talk about here. Lunar Duskbringer helps you out and uh, helps bring out a Felios on curve. Sketcher helps you discard cards that you might not want anymore, like extra temples. Priestess and Fangs, just some nice value, as is uh, Star Shaping, which also gives you some extra late game. Really fun deck. It sounds a little bit easy to play, but you have to remember you are only allowed six unit or six slots on the board. So you have to be careful as you might run into a problem of having too much stuff on the board and wanting to summon Talia and copy something. And you might not be able to because your board's a little too full, which is usually a good problem to have. But still, next up, because I spent a, I want to kind of power through this one because one, it's just a temple deck. And two, we spent a lot of time talking about Lee Shirima. Next one is the hot new thing that uh, is stirring up a little controversy. We got Timelines Control, Timelines OTK, whatever you want to call this deck. Uh, there's a lot of variants of this deck. Um, I'm showing this one, which is what I think is one of the better versions, more controlly. There are other versions that are more aggressive, more tempo-y, that just play the Ladros Timelines combo as a little extra. If you don't know what the combo is, the combo is you play concurrent timelines and then you play Commander Ladros. Commander Ladros transforms into Dreadway while his ability is still going off. He will turn into the Dreadway before the ability goes off and Ladros Dreadway is a 20 or a OTK in other words. Pretty good, right? Uh, also, I believe the math is there is a 60% chance that Ladros turns into Dreadway. So that is also why we play things like Atrocity in case we whiff on that chance just so we can actually kill our opponents because it will happen. And we also have Burn for that too, like Mystic Shot, but eh, whatever. It's not even really that much of a high roll deck, but it's a fun deck. We also have uh, cards like uh, Kindred, Elise. Uh, Kindred and Elise are mostly just here to, well, buy time and kit until we can get to Ladros. Outside of that, Think of it like a Karina control deck without Karina. Some people like to play Karina in this deck. I have tried out Karina in the deck. I personally don't like Karina in the deck. I still feel like even if you're able to play Karina and transform Karina into Dreadway, it's just not enough. So I prefer this style, which uh, plays a bunch of like smaller units plus Spirit Leech to draw through the deck and more removal instead of playing Karina herself. And yes, while Karina herself is removal, she's also a nine minor card. Kind of expensive. I'd say to play the deck, just focus on staying in control of the board, deal some damage every now and again when you can, and then go for the combo with uh, Ladros into Dreadway. Uh, you will need to, um, I think you should try to get a little bit of chip damage every now and again, because you might have to rely on your backup plan of Ladros Atrocity to kill your opponent. So, very fun deck. Honestly, like, it's very controversial because a lot of people don't like losing into the Ladros into Concurrent Timelines list, but it can be stopped through ways like Vengeance and, I guess, Deny and Right of Negation, but it is a little strong. Honestly, I would not be surprised if they nerf it, but I hope not because I have fun with this deck and I like it. Uh, next up, another Kindred deck. Less controlly though, this time. We've got Kindred Nasus. 
uh, Endure, I guess, if you want to call it that way. It plays very similarly to They Who Endure decks. Um, if you haven't, if you've played They Who Endure decks, this, and you have been missing it because it's just been bad for a while, this is the deck for you. Uh, very, very similar in how you normally play Endure lists. The old list, uh, you tempo out, you got a bunch of, like, early game, put pressure on your opponent, then you summon your Endure, Atrocity them. Instead of Endure here, we have Nasus. Uh, Nasus is pretty sweet because he keeps growing even after he's been summoned, so that's cool. Uh, Kindred is just here mostly uh, to bridge our early game into our late game by putting pressure on our opponents in the mid game, killing a couple of things and stuff. And then Nasus comes down and will probably swing in for 10 plus damage and then maybe even Atrocity. And then thanks to cards like Rite of Negation and, well, we have uh, ways to protect him. And Rite of Calling is pretty sweet to actually find the Nasus in the late game. Sure, it might find Kindred, but you take that chance. Really, really fun deck. I have tried out um, Bark Beast, the one mana one one that gets plus two plus two when something dies on your side. I like it. It le it leads to more explosive turns, but I feel like I just like more spells and more card draw than the more explosive turn. You can try it out if you want and cut a couple of removal or cu a couple of spells, but I like the list that is here for now. So, again, like I said, play similar to Endure. Just use your board, pressure them. Might even You might even win without even needing Nasus. But if you don't and your opponent's still somehow alive, play Nasus and win that way. Maybe atrocity them and easy game, right? Now, the next one, I think I said already that Timelines Control, Timelines OTK is my favorite deck, but this one is a close second or maybe even a solid competitor for my next favorite deck, or even my favorite deck. It's Lissandra Trundle Control, Shadow Isles, Freljord Control. You know I love Shadow Isles, you know I love Freljord, you know I love Control. So I like this deck. I don't know how good this deck is, in all honesty. Um, is this better than, say, Field of Rush and Anivia? Only time will tell, in my honest opinion. But I think this is a solid list for the meta. Um, the gameplay or game plan is still pretty much the same as other Shadow Isles, Freljord controls. Just stay alive until you can get to the late game and do your late game plan. Uh, in this case, we have multiple plans for the late game. We have just summoning um, the eight mana eight eights from Frozen Thralls. And then we also have the Watcher uh, quote unquote OTK strategy. And then you also have uh, Trundle and Trundle attacking in because he's very big as another win con. So lots of uh, win cons here. Very fun deck. Uh, we have Spectral Matron to play Spectral Matron when we finally get our Watcher to get a zero mana. Well, not really a zero mana Watcher, but to cheat out the Watcher. Plus Spectral Matron also helps the Watcher get her discount, if you will. And all you have to do with the Watcher is attack in. So, very fun deck. Uh, if you want to just play a control deck, it's good. The only issue I've had with the deck, in my honest opinion, is, again, similar to Talia Aphelios Temple decks, is board space. So, I've seen a lot of lists that don't play Frozen Thrall at all. I've seen some lists also that don't play Spectral Matron. Um, I don't know about the list, though. But I feel like... This is a good start. Maybe you do cut some Frozen Thralls, but it helps to level up Lissandra and get your Watcher out cheap. Plus, Draclorn Inquisitor synergizes so well with Thralls. So, again, not really sure. So, another big issue I've been running into is uh, lack of card draw kind of hurts. So, you could consider things like Glimpse. Averos and Sentry is doing his best, but it's just kind of not enough. Uh, you could also try, I guess, um, Spirit Leech, the 4-mana four 4-1. Four but at that point, I'd probably want to play things like Hapless Aristocrat along with that. Outside of that, our game plan is stall, 
and stall and try and control the board using the avalanches and the blighted ravines. The uh, new spell, I can't remember the name of it, the three mana deal one to everything spell also is a decent consideration. It's really good against Fizz decks, but we have Avalanche and Blighted Ravine, so I don't think it is necessary, but it's still pretty sweet. Also, you don't even need, um, let me think, Spectral Mate, or sorry, you don't even need to uh, Spectral Mage and Watcher because you can also just Spectral Mage and something else. For example, um, well, I guess like a Trundle or a Draclorn Inquisitor. And just something, in other words, something else big and win that way. Because the Spectral Matron herself is a fairly sizable unit. So there's a lot of takes on this deck. I've seen some that play Atrocity. I've seen some that play all kinds of stuff. More Ruinations. I've seen some that play um, Revitalizing Roar as well instead of Spectral Matron. I personally like Spectral Matron a little bit more right now, but uh, I've also, I also like the version that plays Revitalizing Roar. So very fun deck, um, and that's gonna be it for all five decks. Sorry for all the people who wanted an aggro deck. Uh, I couldn't find a good aggro deck that I like. There's a couple of them. There are just um, Azir aggro, whether they play Lucian or they play uh, Quinn. I am not sure how good that is, which is why I didn't want to include it here because I didn't think I could talk about it too well. There's some Renekton Overwhelm decks that play things like Sejuani. Uh, there's a couple of LeBlanc decks as well that are pretty nice. There's a lot of viable decks if you uh, are interested, but I just wanted to include five. I didn't want to make this too long of a video, including things like maybe 10 decks or whatever, but I could have done it, but I didn't want to because that would make the video really long. And I know people don't like videos that are too long. Um, so yeah, that's going to be it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed it. I hope you found a deck that you enjoyed. If there are any decks that you uh, saw here today that you uh, think could be improved by changing a couple of cards here or there, I'd love to hear uh, your opinions down below in the comment section, as well as if you just enjoyed the video, it'd be really nice if you could just leave a comment or a like down below as well. Also, if you want to keep up with the Room Terror content, you can always go and subscribe to the channel as well. I will be putting out some deck tech videos where I take some of these decks, not just these decks, but other decks, and I go through them and play a couple of games on my YouTube channel. So you can have you have that to look forward to. Uh, also, if you want to watch me play some more Legends of Room Terror, you can always go and check me out on my Twitch TV account. I stream pretty much every day, uh, barring anything happening over at Twitch TV slash Seneton. Always a fun time there. Anyway, though, with that all said and done, thank you all once more for watching this video. And until I see you guys in the next one, uh, bye.